what special affinities appeared to him to exist between the moon and woman. Her antiquity and preceding and surviving successive Tellurian generations. Her nocturnal predominance, her satellitic dependence, her luminary reflection, her constancy under all her phases, rising and setting by her appointed times, waxing and waning. The forced invariability of her aspect, her indeterminate response to an affirmative interrogation, her potency over effluent and refluent waters, her power to enamour, to mortify, to invest with beauty, to render insane, to incite to and aid delinquency. The tranquil inscrutability of her visage, the terribility of her isolated, dominant, implacable, resplendent propinquity, her omens of tempest and of calm, the stimulation of her light, her motion and her presence, the admonition of her craters, her arid seas, her silence, her splendour when visible, her attraction when invisible.
A novella by the same name was written by a well-known poet of Wales tattooed up in bed at the library they write about Wales and the Pembroke satyrs. They live in the mountains near Whirl Wonderland. They call it the Mountain Tarifa. They have in their mountains they write about and write about the peaches that lived in the mountains near Whirl Road. They write about the sea twisty mountains, Tarifa they write about and write about it in their songs and then the next day write about it too. They write about it and the next day write about it too and then they write about it too, then the morning they write about it and then the morning they write about it and the morning they write about it and they write about it and the next day write about it and then they write about it and the next day write about it and then they write about it and the last day write about it and the last day write about it and the last day write about it. And the waiter tell me how I wrote it and I told him it was done. And he said yes, as much as I wanted to write it, because he was a bit of a devious in the past. I wish I had never written it. I don't think I know what to say after all the times I wrote it. I did not want to know what to say, but he gave me the card and gave me the card and I took it in my hand and then I saw it was full of roses. I wish I had a rose on the side of my face. When he said yes, I wonder what he meant. And I said yes, and then he said yes, and then he said yes, and I said yes, and he said yes, and I said yes, and he said yes, and he said yes, and I said yes, and he said yes, and he said yes, and I gave him the card, and he took it in his hand. on the collar and I couldn't tell him not to touch me and he just began walking along with his tongue sticking out of my petticoat because I was too fond of him I suppose I could have drawn him into a conversation with him and he wouldn't have been too fond of me because he was too fond of his tongue I suppose I could have put on my tattoo to show him I had the pleasure of putting on my skirt and the lace on the inside of my leggings my skirt was wet and I said I wonder what he thought of me when I put on my petticoat and everything in the place that he couldn't put on his tongue. Oh, what a pleasure that I was with all the pink. He wore me with a nice bit of a thing, of a thing of beauty. Oh yes, yes, that he was. And I was just a wilder thing of a beauty as him, I suppose he is. He was a bit of a wild of a thing of a beauty too. Oh, I suppose he couldn't stand up to me in the street. Oh, I suppose he couldn't stand up to me in the street. A novella by the same name was written a novella by, by a well known name. poet. A novella by the same name. He was always asking me to draw him in with his eyes and tongue sticking out of me and the way he tells us to be tootish with our tongues. And he is a very intelligent person, I suppose. I wonder what he thinks of me and the way he treats me. I hate to give him his shoes. It seems that way he's always wearing them. I hate to give him my clothes. He could have been officers in the army or army officers, or they could have sent in to get the new year in the new year. Have he a bit of fright as well as some he had after the old year and other he has in his life, his body making too much fat and his skin becoming so thick. And how long does it take for a man to stand up for himself? And how long does it take for a man to stand up for himself?
What in water did Bloom, water lover, drawer of water, water carrier, returning to the range, admire? Its universality. Its democratic equality and constancy to its nature in seeking its own level. Its vastness in the ocean of Mercator's projection. Its unplumbed profundity in the Sundam Trench of the Pacific exceeding 8,000 fathoms. The restlessness of its waves and surface particles visiting in turn all points of its seaboard. The independence of its units. The variability of states of sea. Its hydrostatic quiescence in calm. Its hydrokinetic turgidity in neap and spring tides. Its subsidence after devastation. its sterility in the circumpolar ice caps, Arctic and Antarctic, its climatic and commercial significance, its preponderance of three to one over the dry land of the globe, its indisputable hegemony extending in square leagues over all the region below the sub-equatorial tropic of Capricorn, the multi-secular stability of its primeval basin, its Lutio Fulvus Day. Its capacity to dissolve and hold in solution all soluble substances, including millions of tons of the most precious metals. Its slow erosions of peninsulas and islands. Its persistent formation of homothetic islands, peninsulas and downward tending promontories. Its alluvial deposits, its weight and volume and density. Its imperturbability in lagoons and highland towns. Its gradation of colours in the torrid and temperate and frigid zones. Its vehicular ramifications in continental lake-contained streams and confluent ocean-flowing rivers with their tributaries and transoceanic currents. Gulf Stream, north and south equatorial courses. Its violence in sea quakes, water spouts, artesian wells, eruptions, torrents, eddies, freshets, spates, ground swells, watersheds, water partings, geysers, cataracts, whirlpools, maelstroms, inundations, deluges, cloudbursts. It's vast, circumterrestrial. Horizontal curve. Its secrecy in springs and latent humidity revealed by rhabdomantic or hygometric instruments and exemplified by the well, by the hole in the wall at Ashtown Gate, saturation of air, distillation of dew. The simplicity of its composition, two constituent parts of hydrogen with one constituent part of oxygen, its healing virtues, its buoyancy in the waters of the Dead Sea, 
Its persevering penetrativeness in runnels, gullies, inadequate dams, leaks on shipboard. Its properties for cleansing, quenching thirst and fire, nourishing vegetation. Its infallibility as paradigm and paragon. Its metamorphoses as vapor, mist, cloud, rain, sleet, snow, hail. Its strength in rigid hydrants. Its variety of forms in locks and bays and gulfs and bites and guts and lagoons and atolls and archipelagos. And sounds and fjords and minches and tidal estuaries and arms of sea. Its solidity in glaciers, icebergs, ice flows. Its docility in working hydraulic mill wheels, turbines, dynamos, electric power stations, bleach works, tanneries, scotch mills. Its utility in canals, rivers, if navigable, floating and graving docks. Its potentiality derivable from harnessed tides or water courses falling from level to level. Its submarine fauna and flora, anacoustic photophone, numerically, if not literally, the inhabitants of the globe. Its ubiquity as constituting 90% of the human body. The noxiousness of its effluvia in lacustrine marshes, pestilential fens, faded flower waters, stagnant pools in the waning moon. What concomitant phenomenon took place in the vessel of liquid by the agency of fire? The phenomenon of ebullition. Stephen, the archangel, takes to the skies of the sea and sweeps all the souls from the deepest rocks and stills their weeping, their unjust ends, and sets them tenderly on the strand. To coo, song-like, coo, comfort song, like song, chickbirds, choke like drowning, Coo, see, chickbirds, and sing song comfort to each other until the choke of their drowning is no more. Only 
seashore children in their green woolen hats, in the delight of seashells crunching underfoot. Shells see in green, woolen shells crunching, crunching underfoot. Only children can see them, and their tender, amazed laughter is a mystery to their parents. All houses are made, made from light, all drawn. Houses, houses are drawn from human hands, from the brick light. Dust dissolves as the bricky bills, from the dust, human. All houses drawn from the light from human hands dissolve. And Brother Keen will come back years later, when he is old, afraid and in pain, and cry out, see? And his windows will wink, and his facades shimmy seduce, and his slates get blown upright in the strongest winds from the east, just as the lover he came home to each built day comforted him by ruffling his hair. Nothing can comfort Stephen. He has become the sea, and storms are his wings. The shattered heart who witnesses the sinking of the innocent in a great ship. A woolen doll floating on the surface of the December sea. The light as fluorescent as the flesh of houses. When Stephen hears an old man is dying, he knows that pain, like mist burning, burning, burning. Burning from the surface of the bay on a day no one could have imagined could be this hot. Aren't angels in agony as long as we are? The houses are long drowned when Stephen leaves the shore. But he is legend rain every bloomsday. He is light following a dark shower of pollen, of blood, of sea spray.
آخر رویگر امشره چه آخر رویگر فارسن اکویگ اشه آن نخواین اندر گبخت آگه سسیشن مودو لخت ده حاخن تنسا کلنچن اخته فاسکل ده هولی خالی کینچه کرخت لامه هیل کیگلش کیه
it started so lush and so beautifully and a little cheeky lovely incubus came to me to lie upon, to weigh upon, to brood and they were a mask like a temporary house for a god in cubes, in cubes little cute cubes, isolated cubes on my chest but I wasn't paralyzed, no free to be enamored I was in the privacy privacy of a dream a dream about movement and healing and this little oddball with a mask hiding and revealing their nature all at the same time and no no it's it's not a sex not exactly not inwardly anywho not for those incubed in the private lover's carriage the hearse the confession box the dream no not but outwardly for the voyeurs maybe for hunting eagles that only look downwards in search of what they already know to exist, where what they know exists, exists. And I dreamed I was her, Penelope, Penelope, and she was a healer who healed with colours. Black is the colour. This isn't a stream, no, not a river, no, but it's a rent. Yeah, this is just a rent. Green, sky blue, pink, lavender, purple, gold, silver, white. Hear a pin drop, but I'm too scared to sing you my song. I only sing it when you're gone. At this point, you will probably feel now that you can't feel fully grounded. In reality, confused but not scared, you saw your reflection in a window and were confronted by the mask you wore. And anyway, can't you kiss a man without having to marry him? And first I put my arms around him, yes, and drew him down to me so he could feel my breasts all perking, and his heart was going like mad, and yes, I said, yes, I will, yes. the sun on my face, I love diving into the sea, fingers first, mine in your mouth. You may feel that you are clinging like fire. Dum 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 d